It's terrible. It's not good. It's the best conference in basketball. And for some reason, they can't get anyone good to officiate it. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am out of words. That's Cameron Stewart from Inside the Bears from Sports Illustrated. Thank you for making Locked on Baylor your first lesson every single day. Look, Baylor won. Baylor won. 79 to 67. Great. But I can't, I can't, I can't stop thinking. Like, the show is inevitable. The show is going to happen at some point, and it has to happen now after a Baylor win. Because if it's going to happen after a Baylor loss or a bad call decides it, then that won't make any sense, and it'll be kind of a cheap shot. This, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. The Big 12 is so good at basketball. It's not even John Higgins. John Higgins is, is fine, whatever. Kip Kissinger, I expect it. Him and Scott hate each other. Why is the officiating in this conference, no matter what game I turn on, so <laughs> subpar compared to the competition on the court? It doesn't make any sense to me why the league has to be so bad. And once again, the officials in the Baylor-West Virginia game sucked. They sucked. They were bad. This league deserves so much better than that, officiating-wise, and I don't get why these players don't get it night in and night out. Why is it so bad? You know what, Drake? Got the best basketball conference in America. You're right. Best basketball conference in America. It is, objectively. Baylor Baylor is on an absolute tear right now. Number They're one in the conference. Tied for the lead in the conference with that Texas loss last night. I am battling through illness. Yes. I am the Wally Pip, and I am one missed med away from Lou Gehrig's disease with this bronchitis. And we're sitting here talking about the official. I, 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 it, and it's it, a shame. It's a shame because we had a great Super Bowl game. Sorry, big game. Can't tra- trademark that. Uh, cut that, Drake. Cut that out. Cut that out. Um, great big game Sunday night. Comes down to a call. Iffy call. Yes. Baylor's on an absolute bender right now. I am <clears throat> seeing some sort of light here uh, in my bronchitis diagnosis, and we're sitting here talking about the officials. And and it's the two the two. Kinds of officiating you don't like to see, Drake, are obviously the the non-uniform ones, the right? One, Big 12. The ones where you don't know, like there's no consistency. That's the, that's the number one. Number two is you hate when there's just no rhythm to a game and it's just foul every time down. And with Baylor, West Virginia this year, we have now seen both of those. You remember that game in Morgantown? I do, I do. That took like three hours. That was awful, an absolute rock fight. Each team shot like 40 free throws. It sucked. Tonight, last night, we just got the inconsistency bug, which is what we usually get from the Big 12, where it was just like, how are we supposed to play this? Because one time up the court, it is a foul, and the next time it's not. And, I mean, they were – I don't know these officials. I don't know them the way you do. You got them on a first-name basis like you're Tommy Heinsohn or something. I don't. Uh, But they were ready for a fight tonight. They were ready for a fight. Last night. First ball last night, sorry. First ball that went out of bounds, and they are jawing at the student section. One of them. Oh, the dude. Uh, one of the them. dude one is of the looking officials. at the student the section officials. going, wrap it up. Like, the, this is the first play of the game, and some kid in the Baylor student section, which mm. was great, by the way, is like, hey, boo, your hairline's receding. And the ref was like, uh-uh, nope, I'm done. And the kid wasn't even T-Rex. And then that time down, it was in the T-Rex vicinity, so – uh, T-Rex might be behind that. Might be an assist to T-Rex. Shout out to you for that assist. Um, and then he comes down the court and is like jawing directly at Scott. Directly at Scott. Like, uh, you know, there's always, there's rapport. There's always banter between coach and an official. He was a bit angry. of uh, Just a bit of banter. He was angry. That official <laughs> was angry one play into the game. And I'm like, this is, this is going to be a treat. This is going to be a treat tonight. And it was. It's not like it was. The, the numbers were ridiculous, but it was just like, what is the what is the baseline here? Yes. No pun intended. What is the I, baseline for a for a foul here? Well, I I want to I want to be very clear. The reason that I'm bringing this up today on this show is because the the officiating didn't, in my opinion, decide the basketball game. If it did, again, I think it'd be cheap. It's like, oh, of course you're talking about it now. It decided the basketball game. Baylor won by twelve. Uh, and well, in the middle of the show, we'll talk about it. Baylor and Texas are tied for the top of the Big Twelve. Great. Wait, but what? I do- 
Repeat that. Tied for the top of the Big 12 because Texas right. lost in American United Supermarkets Kroger Arena in Lubbock, Texas. The worst I would name, name my kid after that arena. The worst name for a facility in America. <laughs> and 16 fouls on Baylor. That's not absurd. 15 fouls on West Virginia is not absurd. But I, I go back to moments. And this look, this is a long time coming. I go back to when Keontae George has a breakaway layup. Like, I'm Take like, duh, 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 start spreading the news. That's just always what I think of when you go on a breakaway because it's like, ah, this is too easy. And a guy just fit, like grabs him, just like pulls him backwards. And the ref's like, ah, common foul. It's a break. You like they've inserted a rule into the book for when this happens. Best part of the whole thing, Scott. And the great sport of hockey, by the way, which we are both going to a hockey game. Yeah, tonight. they give you. A they would give you. They would give you a penalty shot for that. That's yeah. how blatant. That is how no one was in front of him. They give you they a give goal. Him a penalty shot. Like, all right, take take a point. Uh, An so, empty net, you can give him a goal for that. By the way, yes, and, and you tonight. and and you had this for Keontae. <clears throat> That's the reason the rule is there. And Scott obviously is upset. Scott doesn't get upset at a lot of things, by the way. Scott's a notable nice guy. Scott is a nice guy. Intense, Kiss- but no, but nice. Kip Kissinger doesn't like him. Bob Huggins and Scott, they get along. Bob got mad at the refs, as he should. As he should. There, But in that moment, Scott yells at the referee that made the call. Great to yell. Then he starts yelling at the other referees. Like, somebody help me out. Somebody here, help me out. And then the guy comes to Scott and goes, you're done. I mean, like, you and I were sitting 10 rows up. Guy goes, you're done. And we had great seats last night, by the way. That's a that's an aside, but we great had some seats. great seats. Section one eleven parking passes, seat five. That's Paul Brown, who's not listening to this, but that seat was awesome. Twelve and thirteen, and he said, "Scott, you're oh, done." God, that's we it. both were thermophits. Yep. Period. You're done. And I like this is you're just <clears throat> bad. I I John Higgins, who's the one with the long hair. If you guys don't know who John Higgins is, he's the one with the long hair. He said about a year ago, the Big Twelve is the hardest basketball conference to officiate. Which is a weird thing to say, by the way. I could buy it, but yeah, I mean, it's sure. It's, but like, why, me, you're a referee. Like, why, what yeah. is the point to saying that? Yeah. What is what is that going to win you? It's like, oh, okay, you also get the toughest the hard, one to coach in. But yeah, you get the hard I, games. Yeah. All right, and and to play in. Oh, uh, so it's like, I, I, oh, yeah, yes, high school officials don't yell at them. I think that's BS. They're getting paid mm-hmm. a lot of money. College officials. You can yell at them. They don't let you apparently now because the guy, the literally, I don't know the last time I saw a referee look at a student and have dialogue Mm. on the first call of the game. And we have seen opposing coaches in the NCAA tournament have dialogue with students more recently than referees. Yes. These, Chris, if you know, you know. These people, yeah. uh, these people who (laughs) made dialogue a lot with opposing fans and students, which was really weird. Yeah. But they, th- you're making so much money as a referee, so much money to do this job. It is your job to get these correct. You've got replay, you got three sets of eyes, and you can't get it right. The TCU Baylor game, the TCU Baylor game. I don't know if you watched it, where Fran Fraschilla gave his monitor over to the referee and was like, "I'm sorry to the viewers." At sorry, home. viewers. He's screaming. Sorry, Fran. It's it's literally in Fort. It's Fort Dixon. No one. It's not loud there. You don't have to yell. It's okay. And he gives. I just need to apologize to the viewers. And Fran, I'm gonna give the monitor. Fran's like, this is our only angle. So what do they do? They zoom it in. It doesn't change anything. You can still only see one angle. They zoom it in, and they say that Adam Flagler threw the ball out of bounds. Maybe he did, but the original call was one thing, and you can't tell that anything different from the original call happened. They just said, "Huh, this would be a good guess." And they changed it. It's literally what you cannot do per the rule. <clears throat> I can't. I can't. I can't. Fifty plus. Was it fifty fouls in that one West Virginia game earlier this year? Uh, it's. Brutal, man. I, I turn on. I turn on Iowa State, Oklahoma State a couple games ago. Um, there was a great ref you suck chant at the TCU game. That I, I hear those night in and night out in the Big Twelve. Here's the deal. Every league's not great. College basketball officiating, probably the worst officiating there is in in college athletics. Uh, you can make a case for baseball, softball, I'm sure, but <laughs> usually they're they're close enough, and there's instant replay in all of those games. This is a problem. This is the great problem of this year's Big 12 to me. Why can't they get it right? I I hate that they suck so bad. Oh, well, if you hate they suck, why don't you go be one? No. Is someone going to say that? You think someone's going to? I hope not. They would have as a high you school. Think one they of their burners. Like, yeah. If this was locked on. And, and, and that does vary, by the way, because 
up or up my neck of the woods. They don't really get paid. In high right. School. If this was so. locked on Alito High School, they'd be like, "You go do it then, bro." And no, I know they'd be like, we haven't lost a district game since 2007. Honestly, I'd probably be making more money at Locked On Alito than I am Locked On Baylor. They got some fans, man. They, they do. Got they fans. got following over there. They got, uh, they're gonna uh, love they got a program. Out. I'll tell you that much. Now, I'm going to split that. I'm going I'm to tell you what I'm going to do here, Cameron. Cameron Ho. I'm going to split this thing up into two shows. We're about to start the second show about how Baylor's tied for the top of the Big 12. They are. They are. It's a true story. That is true. But before I tell you about that, I'm going to tell everybody at home about Built Bar. Oh, you ever want to be built? You know what? They, the kids are saying that nowadays. Like, get built. Like, oh, that guy's built. And it means he's strong. It means she's strong. That They've got muscles. You can do that for you. You can. You don't have to weigh the what you don't want to weigh. You can lose weight. I'm, I'm cutting right now. I'm cutting down, trimming down a little bit, you know. I'm going to Los Cabos, Mexico. I am. So I'm trimming down with Built Bar. You don't want the fat. You don't want the calories. You want Built Bar. 100% real chocolate. 130 calories. 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. That's 130 calories, which is the same as this bag of HEB peanut butter filled pretzels. 10 of those pretzels. One serving. 130 calories. That's it. Buy both of them. I don't care. 17 grams of protein, too. Built.com. They, they got them there. They got them at Walmart. They got it at Sam's Club. You go to Walmart, get a four-bar box of cookies and cream, the double chocolate coconut puffs of Sam's Club, get a 13-bar box. You can't eat all 13 in one day. I dare you. Try. Do it, and then tweet at me. Brownie batter, churro. Thank me later. Built.com, Walmart, Sam's Club, Built, Bar, Health. Lose some weight if you want to at Built Bar. That's what Terry Be- Bradshaw was saying to Andy Reid, by the way. Did you did you stick around for that trophy presentation? This is I did. Really it was cool. weird. It was really he just weird. kept he just made like five comments about how Andy Reid was fat. Like, <laughs> okay, we get it, and I'm sure Andy Reid probably has a good time with it. But he was like, get the big guy, get the yeah, big fat guy, waddle on over here. He did like, get yourself that. a cheeseburger. I'm like, okay, all right, okay, all right. He's fat anyway. Baylor basketball is tied at the top of the Big Twelve now. With yeah. Time. Yeah. Who? Okay, I want to take you back to I want to take you back to a point in time. Oh, that sucked. That was terrible. Baylor just dropped its third straight Big Twelve game. Two of them at home. Cam, this team at this point will be lucky, lucky to win ten games in Big Twelve play. It, it. There's just no way it happens. Yeah. Look, I'm saving pulling out my tweets. I need to get ahead of it. But I'm I'm gonna try and save it until the last Saturday of the regular season. This team's not elite. Oh, and three start. <laughs> hey, Two uh, one of us, one of us, one of us said they were elite like a week later. One of Damn. us, not both of us. One of us. Uh, you're right, Drake. And we all, we all, I think we said it on that podcast too. You, we as a collective, Baylor mm-hmm. Nation, uh, thought it's gonna get better. Like, the, obviously, they weren't gonna go winless, but. Yeah. They're not going to be at the bottom of the conference. Like they're going to figure something out. But I think our point after the 0 3, and I think a lot of people thought the same thing was, but like what what is the big shift? Because at this point, again, we we don't even expect Chamo Chachua to play this year, right? Yeah. Like it, it's like uh that's probably not happening. So who is stopping? Oh, up? dude, I Where forgot the about that. There was a legitimate from? point at the beginning of the year where like maybe March Madness for every day. Yeah. Time. I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I had no expectations for it. I was like, don't even think he's going to play this. He's just put in 20 minutes now as the best defensive player on the Mm. team. But okay. Like again, like he didn't miss a beat. So it was like, okay, what's going to happen though? Like, is Langston Love going to be an offensive force? Yeah. Which some nights he kind of is. Um, Like, are they going to go to the basket? Like, are they going to find a way to play better offense? What is Jalen Bridges going to give you? That was one guy I was pretty hard on the beginning of the season. I'm like, what is this guy's game? And it is all kind of figured itself out. And I don't think any of us thought, what was it nine of 10 now? Um, I don't think we could have saw that coming and to be tied for the conference league with a couple weeks left here. This is not uh, creeping up in the last week of the season. Uh, we've got whatever, three weeks left? Four Five weeks left? more games. Five, Five more, games. more games. Five more games. That's three it. weeks. So, oh, it's special. I'm saving to bring those tweets out because... They weren't great. Um, but no, I did not think they were going to be in this. There was a thing that happened the other day. There was a thing that happened the other day. And, and they were, and, by, and I mean, obviously, the biggest point was they sucked defensively. Oh, they're still not they were great. Bad. They're still they like were the bad. worst team in the Big 12 defensively, by the way. Yes. But it's noticeably like it is. They held the team under 69 points last night, which is nice. 
Um, but this is actually, you know what they have, Drake? They have the formula of actually how you win in the NBA. I, I keep bringing up my Celtics in this podcast oh. in general. I'm going to bring them up again because the right. Warriors had it last year too, where the Celtics were so suffocating defensively, but they didn't really create shots well and they turned the ball over too much. And mm. now it's like they have a good defense. They're now in the top 10. Baylor, that's equivalent to a top 10 NBA defense, even though it's at the bottom of this conference. Um, and they space the floor well. They make shots. They they got guys who can make shots inside. Some days, okay, it didn't happen against TCU, uh, but most days they can, and they're efficient enough offensively. They don't kill themselves offensively, and that turns into high-volume shooting. And I think that's what wins things now. It won it for Baylor in 21, and they had a great defense to go along with it, but Kansas didn't have as good a defense the next year, last year, as Baylor had, and did some volume shooting. And there they were. Villanova was the same way. Good defensive teams, but didn't turn the ball over, rebounded the heck out of it, and that's what's changed a lot with Baylor since yeah. that 0-3 start. Look, hey, so that, hey. that seems like the model. I'm not saying, oh, my gosh, they're going to win the national championship now, but that's the look of a team Good. that does do that. Baylor's 58th in the country, <coughs> EvanMia.com. And you can mute. You can mute the microphone when you do it. Can I do that? Yes. Oh, yeah, I can. Hold on. Uh, according to Evan Mia, Baylor's 58th in America in defense, which is not good, but also there's 368 teams or 63 teams. So 58 is not the worst and that's good. It's approved. Gonzaga's 54. So Baylor's right up there with an opportunity now to win the big 12. Um, I, I saw a thing the other day, Ashley Hodge did this on Sikkim 365, who I used to big work with. Big Ashley Hodge fan. Great people on both sides. And I I was listening to Ashley talk to Keontae George, played him a clip from, I think, the Field of 68 podcast or something. And <laughs> the podcast is basically like, the Baylor's out of the Big 12 race. I can't win the Big 12. They're not going to win the Big 12. And he played it for Keontae. And Keontae heard it. And Keontae was like, oh, no, no, we heard that in the locker room. Like, we've, we've played that before. And we're, you know, we're going to focus on us. Audience one, you know, he gave all that stuff. But I thought, they've been playing show clips in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, we got some sins to atone for. Flo Thamba, you you said this pregame. He's just sitting, rocking back and forth on the bench. Drake told mixtape, baby. Earbuds in. Like, Flo, what you listening to? Locked on Baylor. Yeah. He dunked that ball today. It was Last night, it was great when he dunked that ball. He went up strong. This is why, this is why I buttered up Scott Drew when I was going to the press conference. Also night. missed a wide open layup to start <laughs> the game. Sorry, Did Flo. Did do that. So I, I, I'm, I, that clip, I'm getting somewhere with that. The reason I bring it up is because I don't think Baylor basketball is going to win the big 12. Boo. Yes, yes, yes. Here goes Drake again. There it goes again. All of you boo me uh, for everyone in the Baylor basketball locker room. As you're listening to this Flo, look at Langston, Langston, look at Keontae, Keontae, look at Adam, everybody wave at each other. I don't think Baylor's going to win the Big 12. Here's why. I hope they do, but they play Kansas on the road on Saturday. They play Kansas State on the road on yeah, Tuesday. I don't love that. They play Texas at home on Saturday, February 25th. They play Oklahoma State on the road on a Monday Playing night. good basketball right now. And then they play <laughs> Iowa State at home. So in your next five games, you will be good to go two and three. Good to go two and three. And I, two and three is not going to win you the league. And you really, you really got to go four and one, and that one can't be to Texas. Yeah, so you're kind of putting yourself, and you, and as you mentioned, your next game's at Allen Fieldhouse. So, Ooh. I, and Ooh. and that that Oklahoma State you said's a Monday, right? I think that's one of those yeah. other Monday games. Monday on the road ton this year. Kind of Hate weird, that. Man. Eight p.m. Hate that. Let's see. That Let's is see. that is a big bogey game. Eight p.m. Yes. Big trap game, man. Oklahoma State's playing some real good ball. Um, you kicked the crap out of them at home. Um, they just won you're coming at off, Iowa State. You're coming off one day rest, which I mean, it's literally rest. Like you're not practicing, you're watching some film, maybe, but you're resting up. Yeah, yeah. One day rest from playing Texas. Who's <clears> from playing Texas? In country who lost? <clears throat> Tech. Tech. <clears throat> so yeah, there's that. And then there's Iowa State, that. who could still be in it, by the way. Yeah, yeah. The last they, they need some help. Pete Souza, the Pete they Souza curse. Help. Jeez, that guy said they were going to win the league, and they have not won since. Um, so there you In go. fact, it went to the op. He said they can't win on the road, and then they stopped winning at home. Too. And now they can't win anywhere. So <clears throat> nice job, Pete. 
Um, Scott Drew's up next. Baylor can win the Big 12. They can. They just won't. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay they don't. They gave everybody else a three-game lead. Otherwise, they would have won this league. They gave everybody else a three-game lead. You shouldn't do that. Um, Scott Drew. By three points, man. Oof. Scott had a lot to say after this one. But before I can flip it over to Scott, I'm going to tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel, is the, it's the place to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a job announcement tonight, I think, by the way. I got a new gig I'm doing for uh, the summer. Stay tuned for that. And you can bet on what it is at FanDuel.com. What's it going to be? Where am I going to go? Different Locked On show. I've been offered one. I've been offered a new Locked On show to host something else. Yeah. Yeah. While doing Baylor at the same time. Maybe I'll do it. It's a no sweat first bet. Thousand dollars. That's right. Remember that no sweat first bet for the Super Bowl? Well, you can do it for anything now. Anything. The NBA. Spreads, money lines, totals, rebounds, assists. You got some guy. You're like, all right. You got like a two by three bet, like two three pointers scored in the first three minutes. I mean, you can make that bet. FanDuel Sportsbook. Safe, secure, easy to use. Well, you can bet on everything. Why not bet on everything? At FanDuel. It lets you combine bets, bigger payouts, same game parlays. FanDuel.com slash locked on, all caps. FanDuel.com slash locked on. $1,000 in bonus bets. If you lose that first sweat, no bet. First sweat, no, no sweat first bet. Every moment is more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Scott Drew, take it away. All's well that ends well. Uh, a lot of games in a short period of time. Um, after starting out 0 3, a chance to be uh, tied for first place. So, um, uh, now the, the the real fun begins, and a lot of basketball left to be played. But uh, 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 like tonight, I could tell that John was getting more comfortable out there, and uh, I thought uh, uh, the guards really did a great job. Uh, uh, Coach Huggins always going to have a couple wrinkles, and their trap bothered us early. And uh, I thought uh, the guards did a great job, uh, especially when Adam went out. Key Key did a tremendous job. Uh, um, running the point and, and a handle in the trap and letting us play four on three, get, get a lead, get some separation. And then from there, uh, second half, I thought uh, the guys were really focused, dialed in. And, um, I mean, the way we shot from three, maybe we're better playing more games and less practice. Yeah, how much does that help, you know, guys like LJ or burying those threes? Or they're known for their physicality. Does that – uh, definitely opens things up and allows driving lanes. And uh, what you love about the team being unselfish is, uh, like, at the end of the game, uh, John's like, hey, run run, run a play for LJ because they knew he was close to the school record. And you love that unselfishness. And I thought uh, 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 Keontae was tremendous with nine rebounds and seven assists. He almost had a triple-double and uh, really uh, did a lot of unsung things tonight. And... Um, Obviously, LJ was was on fire, and I know it was an emotional game for Jalen. Uh, a lot of friends and people he still respects, talks to. Um, so, uh, at the end of the day, you got to win home court. Want to start by saying thanks to the students. I think it's our fifth straight student sellout, and that's so critical, especially in a, a, a quick turnaround. You need that energy, you need that boost, and uh, um, I thought the, the crowd really gave it to us, especially a, a second half and allowed us to extend it and, and put it in a comfortable margin. Scott, you held them without a field goal for about 10 minutes there in the first half. What were you all doing defensively? To <laughs> well, we, we, we needed to hold them without a field goal for a lot longer than that because uh, th at the end of the day, they did shoot 45% and uh, 54 in the second half and thought they really did a better job getting inside. We were mixing up our defenses, and uh, the zone, uh, uh, I think, changed the momentum tempo for a minute, but like all great programs, and uh, Coach Huggins made some good adjustments. They did a good job uh, uh, getting it inside, hurting our zone. And um, when we, we did did get stops, we, we didn't get as many rebounds. And uh, that's one of the weaknesses, obviously, playing zone is the rebounding. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, if we continue to play zone, we, we got to work more on. Scott, uh, Texas Tech beat Texas tonight. You guys are tied for first now. I mean, what does that say about? Well, well, first, it's it's a monster playing uh, anywhere uh, in this league and every game. You know, you look at the analytics and uh, it's Big 12 team after Big 12 team. And it's like uh, it doesn't matter where you're at in the standings, um, top 20 offense, top 40 defense, top in this, top in that. And uh, it, it's really, really hard to, to win on the road. And uh, uh, 
I know we've we've had a couple uh, uh, great road wins, and our crowds really helped us defend the court. Uh, home court is late, and we need to finish it out now. Scott, uh, LJ in the first half just had the hot hand. Hot hand. Uh, and, and you know what? He got some good looks there. Guys did a great job getting him the ball on time on target, but they set some good screens. Then when they were trapping and when they played zone, that allowed uh, some – some uh, uh, good looks, and if you give a good shooter good looks, they're a good shooter. And at 19 assists, guys are really unselfish, um, and it was great to see. Did they take Keontae out of it, or was he just not looking for his shot that much? I, I think uh, uh, he did a great job taking what the defense gave him. And uh, uh, first time down there, uh, he got going, and we kept feeding him. This game, it was it was LJ was going, and uh, that's was a sign of a good team. Is when you have someone hot, uh, you don't freeze them out and say it's my turn. I got to get a shot up, but you feed the hot hand. And at West Virginia, Keontae went for thirty plus, and tonight LJ went for twenty six. So um, again, I, I think every coach would take triple doubles, and that's basically what Key was close to tonight. Scott, it seems like when this team gets going, shooting the ball. It might be one of the best that we've seen come through here. How would you rank this, this team in terms of shooting, in terms of the teams you've coached? Well, we do have the number one offense out of 353 schools, so that's that's pretty hard to do. Um, defensively, we've gotten better, uh, but that that's the area where we can make it easier for our offense if we can get more stops, get in transition. Uh, and then, again, I think uh, it's still – going to take time for us to get used to John, John to get used to playing. But um, you saw uh, his skill level in the post. Uh, he was able to get some buckets. And those those are huge because now all of a sudden you're not just depending on the threes. And it really uh, uh, makes people make decisions. Are you going to double them? What are you going to do? And, um, again, I, I think uh, – I saw someone put out this time last year, St. Peter's was 12 and 11, and North Carolina was – didn't know if they were getting the NCAA tournament. We know what North Carolina ended up doing. We know what St. Peter's ended up doing. There's a lot of basketball left to be played. We got to keep getting a lot better. Thank you, guys. Hey, you go ahead and take tomorrow off if you want. That was Scott Drew. Cam, what do you got? Got one more thing. I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to open this up to our YouTube people, mainly mm. to you. Really got to wrap uh, it up. I love this hat. Okay. Yeah. I love this hat. It's a yep. felt Stetson range. I, I look like the Cowboys team doctor, which is exactly what I was going for. Yes. Now I here's agree. the predicament, Drake. You and I separately are going to a hockey game tonight. Dallas Stars hosting Stas. your Boston Bruins. Stas um, Bruins. And I'm so excited, man. I've been waiting all year for this. I haven't seen the Bruins on the road. I haven't seen a Bruins game in a long time. Um, I was really excited to get the Celtics San Antonio. It's a big deal for me. I spent a lot of money on this, actually, uh, for a Valentine's Day gift for me. Me too. Brent. That my woman will also be going to. Um, and you're, I was thinking, the market? I was thinking, Drake, I'm going to do my Pooh Bear jersey, my reverse retro. I'm going to do some boots, right? I'm going to do some boots. It's Texas. And I don't have a good Bruins hat. So I'm like, should I do this hat? And I wore it on Saturday with the Pooh Bear jersey watching the Bruins game. And they lost. They've lost like two times this whole year, by the way. So question, should I wear the hat? Should I wear this hat? They're 0-1 in the hat, but it looks badass. Like it's it's a baller hat. Nah, I don't care. <clears throat> I say wear it. When in Rome, when in Answer Dallas. Answer in the comments section, okay? This I'm going to bring been... it. I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to be monitoring the YouTube comments. Oh, section happy I Valentine's Day, everybody. Mm. Gosh dang it. I, I love you, Baylor. Top of the show instead of screaming about the refs. Mm. Uh, this has been Always Will Be. Come back tomorrow. I love you, Boston Bruins. Uh, Robbie Triano joins the show to talk about Big 12 basketball. I love you, Drake. This has been <laughs> Always Will Be. Locked on. Thank you for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor. Baylor.